For our section on web development, you're going to need Brackets, which is at brackets.io. It is a free program. It is supported by Adobe, and it's of excellent quality. So I want you to download Brackets, and I'm going to have you install a couple of tools that will make it much easier for you to create error-free websites. So go ahead and download it. It won't take long. Once it's downloaded, you'll install and just use the default. Okay, once Bracket's installed, you can open it. And I strongly recommend that you pin it to the taskbar or the start bar because you're going to be using it a lot. I tend to use mine from my taskbar. When you open it for the first time, you might get a few messages. I have been using it extensively because I teach web development classes, so I have everything set up. Yours isn't going to look like this. You're going to see an introductory website, but what you want to do is you'll have some sort of folder here, and you're going to want to open folder. And wherever you want to work, I'm going to work in my documents folder, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it cdm110-web and then I'm going to select the folder and that's where I'm going to do all of my work now for each project that you do you're going to create a new folder I'm just going to get you through the very first project which is just going to be a little bit of text about yourself but before we do that I want to show you how to add some simple plugins that will really help the quality of your work. So to add simple plugins, this is your tool, your extension manager. It sort of looks like a Lego block to me, and you can click on that. And I want you to look for Emmet. Now mine's already installed, so you'll just hit install, and you'll install it. Then you might want to look for spell check. and install it, beautify, and install it, and I have one other that I use, and I can't remember the name of it. This is the other one you want, new markup checker. This looks for errors. So if you get those four, so new markup, beautify, emmet, and spell check, you should be, have everything you need for the software for this class. Now I'm going to show you how to use Emmet. I don't expect that you're going to use all of the tools that I do, but Emmet is a shortcut toolbar, and there's one tool in particular that you're going to want to use. So Emmet's in here, and you can use some of these options that you, uh, from up here, or you can just use the keyboard shortcuts I'm going to teach you. You're going to do five assignments for the web section. So for each one, you're going to begin by creating File, New, and then to actually work in the file, you want to save it as an HTML file before you start editing so that all the tools work. So we're going to do File, Save As, and we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it Project 1. And please add your last name to it because when you hand it in, you're going to zip the whole folder and hand it in. And then your file name for every single file you do in here, because we're only going to do single page websites, will be index.html. HTML is your web page extension, like Word would be doc or docx. Web pages are .html. Index means that it's the page that will open by default if you go to that folder level. If you have more than one page, your other pages would have unique page names. But every single web project should have at least a single page named index. So uh, inside each of our folders, because each folder will be its own project, 
you'll have an index.html. And then you'll hit save. Now Emmet lets you do some things automatically. There are some default settings, some default lines of code that you put into every single HTML document. And if you type an exclamation point and hit tab, Emmet puts in all of those core codes for you. I'm going to make mine a little larger. Now since this is web-based, brackets is web-based, if you use control plus, you can make the text larger like I just did. That makes it easier for you to read, especially when I'm doing video recording. Now this is a basic web page. Everything in here is required for good web pages. It may work without some of these, but these are what the minimum lines that are required. So I'm going to explain them to you and we're going to make a few changes and you'll hand in this as your first assignment. So the title should be, the, and this is going to be whatever appears up in the tab in your web browser. And I'm going to put it as about Mary. And so we're not going to actually publish these online. You could use your first and last name. If you're publishing it online, you want to think about what you want to share. So you're going to write a page about yourself. The, he, the beginning, this tells it that we're using the current version of HTML. If we were using an older version, it would say have another string here past the HTML. This is the start of our HTML page. And you'll notice when I click on this, these both highlight because typically about 95% of HTML tags, that's what these are called, are done in pairs, an opening and a closing pair. About 5% are like our doc type statement where you just need the statement and no closing tag. So we need an HTML tag to say that this is our HTML document. Each HTML document is broken into two sections. We have a head section, and this has information about the document, how it's styled. In this case, we're saying that it's using the character set of UTF-8. That's the standard American character set. We're not using Japanese or some sort of other character set. And a title, which is the title of the page. In this case, it's about Mary, because my name is Mary, and I'm going to show you to do some really basic HTML. Then we have the body of our page, and this is what actually appears on screen. The first two tags of content that I'm going to teach you are H tags, which are heading tags, and P tags, which are paragraph tags. Now, since everything occurs in pairs, if you type in H1, what invokes Emmet, so that will give you your, your opening and your closing tags, and you want to type your contents inside of them. So you can have levels of H1 through H6, and you can use them each multiple times. H1 is the most important, and the default styling will be that it's the largest. H2 is a little less important, H3 is a little less important, and so on. So I want you to have a title where it's about yourself, and then you're going to have about three more sections. I'm going to make them each an H2. So I'm going to do H2, and in Emmet, you can do this a little faster if you do um, H2 times three, because I want three H2 head tags, and then I hit tab. So it's H2, an asterisk, and then three, and I hit tab, and it gave me three H2 headings. So for the first heading, I'm going to put in education. And you can choose different things about yourself. And then I'm going to include hobbies. And I'm going to include pets. So you share what you feel like sharing. Get as personal as you wish or not personal if you want to stick to things like on a resume. But I want you to have an H1, which will be at the top of the page, and I want you to have a few, at least three H2 sections. Then under each of the H2 sections, you're going to write a short paragraph. So it'll be P and then tab, that's a paragraph, and I'm going to write a little bit about myself. I'll fast forward it so that it doesn't take too long. Okay, so I've typed in a paragraph here, and while I was typing, I noticed that I, down, I have this yellow exclamation point down at the bottom. And these 
actually look like there's not really an error. So I'm going to save Control S and that fixed them. So if you see an error down here, try saving first. So you'll want to check frequently that there are no errors here. And you can, if there are errors, you can ch click on it and it'll, it will tell you what lines the errors are on. So I'll add the rest of my information and fast forward through that. So this is basically what your page should look like. To save it, it's Control S, and you should be testing this stuff fairly regularly. This is a very short page. I haven't tested it yet, but to test it, you are going to click on this sort of Harry Potter scar lightning bolt. It's your live preview, and that will display the page in Chrome. It's going to be really boring looking right now because I haven't changed any of the headings or styles or backgrounds or fonts, but you can see that it's a completely functional web page. Let's look at the page and the code side by side. You can see that my head section doesn't really appear on the page itself. The title, however, does appear in the tab right here. The body section, everything that's in the body section, you can see on the page. H1, About Mary, it's a little larger than the H2 tags, because Education, Hobbies, and Pets are your H2 tags. Then I have paragraphs under each of those of plain text. So for your assignment, you're going to create a web page about yourself. It should also be in a folder, and I'm working in my Documents folder. So inside my Documents folder, I have my CDM 110 folder, and I have Project 1 Winchester. Now the index file should have actually been inside here, so I can just go move that in there, and then I'll have to reopen it here if I want to see it. So this is what you're going to hand in. You're going to have Project 1 in your last name, and to hand it in, before you hand it in, you want to right-click, Send to Compressed Zip Folder. And that's the file that you're going to hand in, the zipped folder. Right now, it's not a big deal that, we're do, that we have a folder, because you just have the index file. Technically, you could have just handed that in. But from this point forward, all of your websites will have images, and they need to be in the same folder. So just get in the habit of, for your web projects, zipping the folder, handing in the whole folder. So you'll go into Canvas and hand in the zipped folder for your homework assignment. This should have gotten you through, step by step, how to create your first assignment. In the next assignments, I'm just going to go through the basic code and what you need to do, not step by step how to create and hand in your project.